I just told them, who, who says serving Jesus wasn't fun? Amen. Man, I tell you what, you know, back in my addiction, I thought, man, they, this is the life. Doing math, man, and then thinking about the good times. But I guarantee if you look at it, about all the bad times. You know, there's fun in, in sin for a season. But you know, that season changed and then what's it, about three seasons of nothing but misery. I don't want no part of it, man. Thank you guys, man, for sharing that and worshiping. That, that is some awesome stuff. Crystal, come on. This is Crystal Holland. She had been at Chrissy's house for right, pretty, a long time. A long time. And I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I, I give her so much grief, you know, she calls me all the time and says, hey, what about this? What about that? And uh, Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, but I'm telling you, we couldn't run Chrissy's house without Crystal. Crystal, it, she does so much stuff behind the scenes, it's just unreal. I'm just focusing on her right now. There's other people out here that we couldn't run Chrissy's house without. But right now, she's the one speaking, she's the one that's going to, what? I, she called me, she, or she messed me, I got something to say. Well, you know what? If she got something to say, I'm going to let her say it. We're not going to hold back. And uh, God bless you, Crystal. I love y'all. And yes, it does take an army. An army of believers to uh, make something so, you know, great known in this community. And um, recently, Dennis Markham introduced me to a guy named Tom Burke. And I've been following him on Facebook. Um, he started Living Proof Ministries and Rendezvous Valley Farms. And he's just fired up for Jesus. And uh, being home during this quarantine, I've been, you know, on all these addiction pages and things like that. And I'm seeing all across the nation how, you know, people are just substituting one addiction for the other. They're arguing about pot and this and that. And it's okay if you're smoking pot but not doing other drugs. And that's just not my platform. And my shirt says that Jesus changed everything. And I used to be that person that substituted one addiction for the other. If I wasn't doing methamphetamine for years, I was smoking pot, I was drinking, it was always something until Jesus came on the scene. And nobody wants to hear about these faith-based programs, but it is so important that we get them out. And we are living in the heart of, of all of them here in White County. And there are so many of us that have been set free and delivered and that their lives have been changed. And it's time that we use that platform and use this time, especially when we can't socialize together one-on-one. -on -one. You know, use social media as that outlet. It's it's not fun. People don't like to get on there and video themselves go live. I'm not a live person. I like to pre-record things so I can take take two, take 65 until I get it right. But you've got to humble yourselves and you've got to be able to put yourself out there because there are so many people that need to hear what God has done in your life. And if we could just get that and, and share it in all these places. I noticed uh, Jennifer Ridings and Terry did their testimony the other day and they had 758 views. And just imagine if we all just put something out there and just shared what each other is doing, we can spread the word of what God has done in our lives for other people so they can see that faith-based addiction recovery does work. I mean, he, Jesus changed everything. Did he change it for y'all? Yeah. Is he changing it? I mean, I was humbled to my knees when I saw that young man come up here and pray a minute ago because, man, it took me back to where I was two years ago, living a life of just absolute destruction. I hated myself. I hated everybody around me. I did not want to live. I was done until Jesus came on the scene. Amen. And knowing me today, I mean, I have joy, I have peace, I have stability. I'm not that bipolar coaster anymore. I mean, this is me fired up, y'all. And if you knew me before, you wouldn't be able to catch me around this parking lot fired up, okay? So I just, I love each and every one of y'all, and I just want to encourage y'all, if you're not following Tom Burke already, follow him on Facebook. And I'm challenging you, put it out there. Humble yourself, put it out there, let others see what the Lord has done for you. And you would just be surprised on, on how many lives that can be touched that way. And I love you all, and that's pretty much all I got to say. Yay. Yay, Jesus. She said, I got to get down. I said, I can push you off. <laughs> no, I need Crystal. You know, um, where's Tim? Tim, come on. This right here is my best friend. 
this guy here, I've known him about 10 years, 11 years. I met him somehow. I, I was I started going to a church, and this friend of mine that I've known forever, he not really a friend, acquaintance, a business associate deal, and he said, "Man, I got a I got a guy I want you to meet." He started. Uh, he said, I'm, "Go meet him in a Sunday school class," and he was teaching Sunday school at Open Arms Assembly. And I thought, "Okay, okay, I will, I will." So I, Holy Spirit prompted me to go one Sunday, so I went down there. I didn't know that God was going to do something in Tim and my life forever for the last 11 years or so. But Tim has been with me since the beginning. He's been with me before Chris's house. He's seen me when I went to Sunday school class. We've become such close friends and I share with him stuff I would never share with anybody else. And I love him. <laughs> I love Tim Walker. He's my best friend, somebody I can count on, somebody that I can call on when I need prayer. And I say, Tim, I need prayer. He say, okay, I'll pray for you. No, it ain't none of that. No, let's pray. Let's pray. And, you know, we all need a friend like that. We all need somebody we can call on and say, hey, I need prayer. So praise God that he's that type of friend. But he's been with me of the death of my daughter, of an overdose the birth of Chrissy's house, and everything has happened in the last two and a half years, but I trust him with my life because I know he will never do anything to, out of what the Word of God says. You know, he'll never, he never tells me his opinion. He tells me what the Word of God says. Sometimes I want your opinion. Sometimes I don't want to hear the Word, but I know the Word is what, what we all need to hear, is the Word of God, because it's the truth. So, Tim, God bless you, my brother. I'm 68 years old. I've seen a lot of life. I've seen a lot of good times. I've seen some tough times. And by the time I was 18, I'd already been to war. But I tell you, we were living in some of the toughest times I've ever seen. If you want to see the, if you want to see the world I grew up in, turn on the Andy Griffith Show. That's the world I grew up in. Y'all didn't get to grow up in that world. That's not the world we live in today. You know, with what we've got going on now, you know, I was thinking, there's so many scriptures running through my mind when I think about where we are today. In Joshua 1, 9, God says, Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not, do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And the key is the Lord your God. If you've made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, you can't. There's nowhere that you can go from the presence of God. Absolutely nowhere. In Psalms, it tells us. He said, "It says, if I sin in heaven, you are there. He said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, your hand holds me, your right hand leads me. There's nowhere we can go from the presence of God." And, and what we're living through today in this, in this what we're calling a pandemic, it is real. I mean, the, the, the virus is real, but I think the panic has been man-made. If we have a relationship with God, we're not to fear. We're not to fear. I'm not, you know, if you have to look at the, at the, the risk factors today for this coronavirus, it's either those that are that are compromised in their health in some way or older folks. Well, I'm the older folks. I'm in that group, and I'm telling you, dying carries no fear for me. Not living is what I'm what I what, what if I have a fear, it's not living. It's not living up to God's potential. You know, it's like now we're on a parking lot. We should be able to come together anytime we want to church. I tell you what, go to go to Lowe's or Home Depot on Saturday morning, and it's shoulder to shoulder, and you can't you can't already find a parking place on the parking lot. But our churches have shut down. But I think it's also a time God God has used this, whether the orchestrate or not. God has used this to bring families back together. You know, I've seen it in my own family, my own kids. I've got I've got I've got six children. 
I got 16 grandchildren. This is my baby sitting in the back of this truck here. She's 16 and my oldest is 48. But you know, I think, I think this is a time, I see especially my own family, I've seen my children, my children and grandchildren, I've seen how they, they're so consumed by social activities, by sports, and their lives are absolutely consumed by it. And this has been a time to come to see families come back together, get away from so many of the activities that separate you from your family. But I think it's only been for a time. It's, it's a time for preparation for what God's gonna do next. And I think there's gonna be a cleansing. I think the people that are that are truly God's, that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, they're gonna come out, we're gonna, well, I say they, we're gonna come out of this and we're gonna rise up and we're gonna be stronger. The comfortable church, I believe is going to go by the wayside. Right. The church that doesn't preach the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church is, that's afraid to offend anybody by speaking the truth of God's Word. Jesus said, many will be offended because of me. Jesus has offended me in my life, but the offense has been that I wasn't living right for Him. I was offended, I was offended into the relationship, not offended because of the relationship. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm trying to try not take up too much time. You know, I think it's in Acts 3, which says, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repent and be converted. What's well, being converted? Look at the world around us. We've been doing this our own way for a long time. We've been doing this the way the world says is right for a long time. And if you look how things have changed in my lifetime, and where the church, the church that God is going to raise, rise back up, where the church has been, this all started, literally it's been in my lifetime, when prayer and Bible reading were taken out of school. People think it was one case, but it was two separate cases. And I'll ask you, where was the church when the, when the court, the Supreme Court, heard the case to take prayer and then to take Bible reading out of school? The church was nowhere. The church sat back and let it happen. If we don't have if we don't have God's word, what do we have? What is our standard to live by? What guides us if we don't have God's word? We do what the world says is right. Well, all of us have lived there, and it didn't work out. I can tell you, I lived. You know, there was a time in my life that the world has said I was extremely successful. Looking back. I look at it as a time of failure because my life was not 100% surrendered to God. Now the world would look at me and say I'm, say I'm a failure, but now I'm the greatest success I've ever been because my life belongs 100% to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you don't want to look back that repent and be converted. We've done this our own way. We've done this under our own power. We've done this by what man says is right. Be converted. Do it his way. You know, prayer, let's be converted. You know, when I think about prayer, two, two ways we have, that we have this relationship to God. One is through His Word. If you don't know what God's thinking, read His Word. If you don't know what God, how God wants you to live, read His Word. If you don't know what God's plan is for your life, read His Word. And people think prayer is a one-way street. They think we pray, we're just telling God our needs. No. Any time that I know that I know that I've heard from God, it's been when I was in prayer. When I heard the voice of God, it's when I was praying. I'm no, I'm nobody special. God, scripture says God is no respecter of persons. What He has done for me, He will do for everybody here. Everybody here. But I think God is going to bring us out of this. And I think He's going to start to bring us out of this very soon. And it's not going to be church as usual anymore. God's looking for those people that are serious about their relationship with Him. Amen. And some of y'all, the, struggle, the struggles you've been through, we've all been through struggles. Mm -hmm. We all have. Some of you are in the middle of them now, but you're in a good place. Yeah. Because you're, you're in a place where you're living in the presence of God right now. Mm -hmm. there's, not a be, there's not a better place to be. And if we want to look at God's plan for our lives, you know, Jesus was asked, 
what's the what's the greatest commandment? He's only asked, what's the greatest commandment? Only asked one. He said you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. What is that? That's God saying, I want a relationship with you. I created you to have a relationship with me. But he's only asked the first, but he said the second is, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. He created for two purposes, for relationship with him and for relationship with each other. You know what David was saying a while ago, how God brought us together. You know, David and I, in so many ways, our person, we're different as night and day. But some of, some of y'all heard his old phrase that I've worn out. David's that guy I take a bullet for. And I know I literally know what that means. And I would. And there are other there are other people here. I'm not gonna call everybody everybody's name, but there's so many people that God has brought in my life through this ministry. And the world will look at this as a ministry of failure. This is a ministry of failure. People have failed in life. No, it's not. We've all messed up. We've all failed at times. Life. These are people who are saying, I want to get my life back. And, the only, and my life belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, gonna fin I'm, not, I'm, not gonna dra I'm not gonna drag on here, but I want to finish with a scripture. This applies to everybody here. It's one that's been used a lot in the last, probably in the last couple of years. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways to seek my face, I will hear them, I will forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church that has fallen away from, from relationship with Him. I said I was going to finish, but I'm going to tell a quick story that goes along with that scripture. Because I think it fits, it fits this crowd in this setting. There's a, document, there's a documentary called Appalachian Dawn. I think it's, I think it's probably, probably 10 years ago. There was a county in Kentucky that was absolutely just overridden with drugs. Virtually no fan, there was virtually no family that hadn't been touched by that hadn't been touched by drugs. There were literally kids in the high school every month dying from drug addiction. I'll tell you what happened. And I think that's what God's calling us to do now is to rise up. But it started with two men. It started with an old Pentecostal preacher, probably about my age, and a Baptist preacher, probably Brother Robin's age. One's a Pentecostal, and one's a ba one's a Pentecostal, and one's a Baptist. I think God's also going to knock some of his denominational barriers down Amen. too. It's all about Jesus, not about the sign yes. on your church, Amen. about Jesus in your heart. Amen. But these two preachers came together. Denomination made no difference. They're seeking the same God. They're repenting before God. Everything starts with repentance before God. The restoration starts with repentance. The restoration starts with repentance. But as they got on their faces before God, before long, every preacher in the county was coming together with them and praying. Denomination made no difference. I don't know what the exact number were, probably 35 or 40 of them came together and started praying. When they did, God honored it. God started, move, God started moving in his community. Well, they decided we've got to organize this. So they set up, they, one thing they did, they set up a hotline basically where you could you could call in and report drug activity and their purpose was not sure people are going to get arrested people are going to do time that was not their purpose their purpose was to turn the community back to god the purpose was to get the drug it was to get the drugs out not to hurt people but to help people then to kick this off they had a march on saturday and then hired this, this young woman to organize this effort with the with the uh, uh, the call-in system and and organize organize between the different groups that were trying to facilitate getting rid of drugs in their community. On this Saturday, when was going they're gonna have it. There was a road. It was probably I don't know, probably six eight six eight lanes wide. And just before time for this to start, for the for the, the parade to start. It started raining, it was cold, and there was virtually nobody there. 
Well, this young lady that they'd hired to organize it said, asked the preacher, said, well, do you think we need to postpone this? He said, do you think the drug dealer's gonna quit selling drugs today? Within 10 minutes, I don't know what the exact number was, there must have been 1,500, 2,000 people crowd that street. How this whole thing played out, half the city officials and county officials got arrested. They were involved, they were involved in it. God turned families, God turned, he, he turned lives around, he restored families. There's one fella, I'm gonna, I'm gonna digress here in a second, there's one fella they said was the worst in the county. There's a preacher who used to go into jail and preach. And one night his wife said he came home and said, this finally happened, he said, what's that? He said, I finally found the one man that cannot be saved. He said he can't be saved. Well, this man, this man that couldn't be saved, one night he gets out of jail and he's walking down the street, it's cold, he's always got on his t-shirt, t-shirt pants, and he's geeking, he's, you know, he's, he's thinking, he's thinking the police are coming after him. Well, they wouldn't have released him out of jail if they still had warrants on him. So they just, re they just released him. So he finds a porta potty on the construction site. He gets in the porta potty and he just starts praying. And so prayer, a lot of you heard a lot of people pray and most people don't mean it. He said, God, if you'll save me, I'll serve you the rest of my life. He said, it got warm in that porta potty. And God, and that night, God saved him and he made good, he made good on that promise. Now, you wanna know who gets to go back into jails and it's probably the, probably affects more lives than anybody in that community? The guy that a preacher, a preacher said couldn't be saved. Yeah. Yeah. What God did for that man, he has intentions to do for every one of you. Amen. And I'll tell you something, when I'm talking, I'm looking in the mirror too. I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I got to admit, I've, you know, I've, I've made as many mistakes, you know, I've fallen as short as anybody, as anybody here. I just stand up here tonight to tell y'all that there is hope, but there's only one hope, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He will turn your life. He will turn your life upside down. He will turn your life around. Where you are, that makes no difference. It's where God's taking you. That's what. You know, something something Crystal said a while ago, she talked about joy and peace. You know, happiness comes and goes with circumstances. Joy and peace, no. Some of the toughest times of my life, and I'm not gonna go into this story, never been convicted of a crime, never been charged with a crime, but I did spend 18 months in jail. And I had some, the greatest, peace and the greatest joy I've ever had in my life was 18 months I spent in that old stinky jail. The greatest opportunity that I had to witness in my life was when I was in that old stinky jail for 18 months. I was blessed beyond measure in that old stinky jail for 18 months. It's not where we are, it's who we are because of who lives in us. Amen. Bless you I do want to say one more thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to speak. I just want to speak a blessing over this crowd. There's a bless. There's a. There's, it's a, a number six. It's referred to as a blessing of Aaron. But here's how it reads tradition. It says, "May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His counsel upon you, give you peace." And I'm going to give you the Hebrew version. The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will lift up His counsel upon you. The Lord will give you that peace. That's the Hebrew version that He will do that. Not may He do it, but that He will do it. And it only depends on our faith and our relationship with Him. Amen. Hey, Brother Mike. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, your guys are well maintaining over here. They did good. Man, they did worship. Man, it, it, we're going to. Where's Lee? No, I see Lee. There he is. Come on, Lee. Lee Steppy. Forgiven through Christ. Yeah, y'all better clap. He, he, he watches you, man. He's looking in the rearview mirror. Yeah, Lee Steppy's a good guy. He come to Chrissy's house quite a few times. He, he shared a little bit down here, and I'm going to tell you, 
I, I walked up to him. I says, uh, you got anything to say? Well, I might. I said, yeah, you do. <laughs> So I ain't got much to say, uh, but the Lord did give me something a minute ago. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it's a pretty familiar verse to most of you guys. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. Uh, any of us that's come out of addiction, we've come out of a spiritual Egypt. We've come out of bondage. Uh, we've come out of pain, trauma, we've come out of regret, doubt, shame. We came out of all that. Uh, as the Israelites were exiting Egypt, being led by Moses, uh, they came up to the Red Sea. And they were facing certain death. Uh, as they were facing certain death, uh, Moses took his staff and the sea was parted. And they passed from death to life. The word there that is used where it says parted, the Hebrew word is baptismo, which means to be separated from, to be separated from. So those of us that have come out of addiction, that's come out of our spiritual Egypt, we're to be separate from the world. We're not to look like the world or partake in the things that the world partakes in. Or the things that our society and that our culture says is fine, we should not partake in those things. Uh, the renewing of our minds, in order for our mind to be renewed, we got to quit putting the same old crap in our ears and our eyes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We have, to, we have to change how we live. Uh, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. The new thing, look, all things are coming new. Uh, but in order to have that renewed mind, we have to allow ourselves or make ourselves stop watching things that we used to watch, stop listening to things that we used to listen to, and stop partaking in things that we used to partake in. Uh, man, I'm just so I'm just so happy that Jesus Christ is more contagious than the coronavirus. Amen. 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 That's all I got, guys. <laughs> Told you I didn't have much, David. I'm sure you can get Mike up here. He can talk all night long. <laughs> All right, Pastor Robin Haley. Yes, sir. You know we met met by uh, by accident. Uh, by accident, yeah. We met by accident. See this record here? Yeah, that's how we met. You know, he 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 had a wreck, and uh, who got the call? Dave Pruitt, praise the Lord. But a friendship come out of that too. See how God orchestrates stuff, and he's been here at Chrissy's house ever since. This is Pastor Robin Haley. Thank you, buddy. I'm gonna pick on Lee because he stole my scripture, but that's okay. I uh, I th that's it. I, I one time I went to a funeral, and this was funny because Lee will get this. And there was an old Baptist preacher and a young Baptist preacher. When you do a funeral together, you need to talk before you get there. And they always use the same verses. You know, they always use the same Psalm 23 and do several certain ones they always use. The old man gets up there and he does this whole spiel. He uses every verse that guy's going to use. And then the young guy gets up there. He said what, what he said. That's basically what he said the whole time he was talking. What he said. And so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay away from that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> a couple things. Uh, the rest of that verse, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And it says not imputing in my version, but not counting their trespasses to them. Abraham believed and God counted to him his righteousness. And, and we need to remember that. There is nothing in us that God would, um, there's nothing about us that's good. We need to start with that fact. You know, when we, he was talking about cutting away and separating a while ago. The, uh, the idea of holy, I think we all misinterpret that. Holy is not an act. Holy is someone who is set apart, someone who's been, God has separated. And when God says he is holy, 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 
That means he is so far removed from anything that we can even possibly understand. He is different. And guess what? We are called and set apart as Christians. We are cut out of the herd. We are, we are, we are separated. We are people that God has chosen. And because of that, we aren't going to look like everybody else. And, I, and one of the things that really got me when I was reading through these scriptures was thinking about the idea that you are a new creation. So if you are still doing any of those old things, and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit's not just wearing you out every time you do, there's a problem. We've got a whole church full in this world that's falling apart because a lot of people that are sitting in the pews aren't saved, and it bothers me greatly. But you know what? The body of Christ, I, and I need to share this because I was telling a friend about this the other day. God put this on me. Denominational barriers really don't matter because the, the body of Christ is that 12 people in this church over here that's Pentecostal. It's that 15 people in that Baptist church over there. There's a group that when, and you know this, if you're, if you're a child of God and you get with another child of God, I don't care what the denomination is, you're a brother and you know it. You immediately bond. You immediately fall in love with each other. You immediately are people that want to share and, and talk about Jesus. So the body of Christ is not damaged by multiple denominations. The true body of Christ. Because it has nothing to do with what's on the front door. It has everything to do with what, where you are in your walk with God. And so I, I think about that this morning, but I'm preaching on this on Sunday. And I want you to hear what the prophet Ezekiel had to say. Chapter 36, verse 22. Therefore say the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. God saves people because God loves people. But he had, there's no reason why God should love us. Absolutely no reason. We, we, we like to think that we have some great value to God, but God chose to love us because He's God. There's no other reason. There's nothing in us that would, would make Him want to love us. We are not good. We are evil. We are only counted as righteous through Jesus Christ. In verse 23 it says, And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. And I'm thinking about right now what's going on which you have profaned in their midst, and the nation shall know that I am the Lord, and says the Lord, when I am hallowed in, their, in, their, in you before their eyes. People see Jesus Christ in you. Everything you do, how you live, how you walk, what you, how you share, you are God's eyes, ears, nose, toes. I always think I'm a pinky toe because I get hung on everything all the time. But you are the body of Christ, and you need to understand that you represent Him in the world, and your walk brings more people to Christ than any sermon ever did. Everything you do, how you live, what you, and, and, and the way you reach out to others, it all matters. Even you guys that are struggling, there's nothing more amazing than seeing a young man come up here and lay down before the, and pray. I mean, they, that's it. That's what, that's what it looks like. That's absolutely what it looks like when you're in love with Jesus. But I want you to listen to what he, this promise. This promise is from thousands of years ago, what he said to Ezekiel about what would happen in these times. For I will take from among you the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you to your own land. Then I will sprinkle you clean with water, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols, and I will give you a new heart and put a spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. If you're in Jesus Christ, you are going to walk in his statutes. Whether you understand that or it's written in your heart, if you truly transform, I worry about a whole church full of folks, and that's, that's the wrong word, a building full of folks. Because the church, like I said, the church is never harmed. Those that are in the body of Christ, they're, they're saved, they're healed, they're redeemed, they're all those things. But those that are in the building called the church, and they're still living the worldly way, are not saved. Yeah. I'm just telling you, if, if you have, if, if the conscience of Jesus Christ and how he lives is not in your heart when you go do something yeah. that's incorrect, I'll just say it like that, I'll be nice. If there's nothing that stops you or slows you down or makes you have pause when you're going to do something wrong, you better check yourself. Yeah. I mean, that, you, you are not saved. I'm not, not, I mean, I'm not here to, you know, be the, the, the devil's advocate or whatever, but we need to understand only through Jesus Christ can we be saved right. and only through complete regeneration can we be saved and, and that can only be done through the work of God. We have no power to do it. No preacher can preach you into heaven and no preacher can preach you in the hell for that matter. Only God has the power to do that. Only Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit can bring you to a place where you can understand who He is and what His plans are for you. And when you walk into His will, it's amazing what He can do in your life. You know, I, I'm just an old boy who, who works every day and, and preaches on Sunday afternoon sometimes. And I'm blessed and I can do all those things. 
But God has shown me through these ministries, particularly in David's ministry here, I met all these wonderful people. They become like brothers to me. But I got to see people who truly had a heart for Jesus. And you know what? They had to see the devil first. I, and I hate to say it like that, but until you've been to the bottom, right. you can't get to the top. Right. Until you turn loose of all the problems and realize that the only way you're going to succeed in this world, in this life, and when I mean succeed, I don't mean by the world standards. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about peace and hope and joy and, and, and the ability to live and walk in times like right now. I'm happier than I've ever been in the middle of this craziness. Because, I mean, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where you're all supposed to be. When the plague comes, guess who's going to get saved? It's us. We can walk in these days. We know how to walk in these days. We know how to reach out to those. We know how to help people. We know how to love on people. That's what we're called to do. I see David in his ministry giving out food and doing all those things every day. I mean, I wish I didn't work a regular job still. When these, what do you call us? Essential? Whatever we are. Anyway. It's essential. Anyway. That just means we have to go to work every day. I don't know how essential that is. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed to, to have the chance to share with you guys. But more than anything, I'm blessed that I wrecked my truck one day and God put David Pruitt in my path and I was able to come here and hang out with you people because out of that came me seeing people have truly had a heart for God. People have been absolutely at the bottom and it, it, it amazed me to, when I listen to y'all stories and I've heard a bunch of them now, imagine, imagine over two years, there's always a defining moment when God knocks you so far down that you're gonna reach up and he's the only answer. And guess what? Every father disciplines that which he loves. You hear me? Every father disciplines that which he loves. And if he doesn't, if you don't, aren't being disciplined and you're getting away with hanky-panky and hooky and all that, I'd be a little worried. If it's going too easy, if something's wrong. When you start going the wrong way, if he really is your God, in my life, I know it's the truth, He'll slam that door in my face so fast that I know exactly where I'm not supposed to be and he'll send me running with my tail between my legs. And I've been there more than once. And I'm so blessed that he has knocked me down because you know what? I'm a hardhead and I'm stubborn and I want to go the wrong way. I'm not one of those people that says, you know, that God opens doors. No, 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 God doesn't open doors for me. He slams and says, you go that way, son. That's where you're going. And, and that's a lot of us. We all hardheaded like that. But guess what? Because of Jesus Christ and because of the power of the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that we cannot do. Amen. There's nothing. You know, and, and he equips you guys. Every one of you here tonight has a purpose in his kingdom that you can fulfill if you just follow his will. And guess how hard it is to know his will? Just pick up that book and read it every night. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. I said me too, Jennifer Knight. He he I think he paid a payment on this record here. <laughs> or his insurance did, praise God. <laughs> but uh, uh, Mike Landers, forgiven through Christ. Huh? You have a call? Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is Mike Landers, forgiven through Christ. I believe he's the founder of, of this deal. Got an awesome ministry here. And they're all clapping for you, Mike. Woo! They're all clapping. They, they they know who feeds them. Praise the Lord. Yeah, y'all help feed them. Let's clap it for you, brother. Boy, what a blessing to be here tonight. Uh, the message he was just on, I was thinking, you know, what I've been preaching on lately is the chastising, where he's chastening us. You know, I'm expecting a huge revival out of this after this corona's gone. So guess what? Y'all are going to start the revival and people are going to follow up behind y'all. We're blessed tonight to have so many preachers here telling the Word of God. And uh, going off his message, they all led me with their messages, praise God. But uh, On the back of our shirts, we have, a, we have a scripture on the back of our shirts that the Lord touched my heart when we opened this ministry. We're going to be in 1 John. We're going to start in verse 5. This, that is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto him that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we live and have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, 
and we do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If they say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Here's our scripture on the back of our shirts. And this is how God is so forgiving. <clears throat> if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we will make Him a liar and His word is not in us. All God wants us to do is to ask Him into our lives. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting on us to submit and surrender and obey Him. Amen. The problem we all have is rebels and been out there. We don't know how to obey. My brother was talking about earlier that the closest he gets to Christ is when he's in prayer. Guys, take the time to read your word and draw closer unto Him. We're just men. We're trying to lead you to come to know Christ as we know Him. Open His Word up. Come to know Him. We could be misleading you up here. Following your Word. Write down. Take notes. Study His Word. Guys, I just tell you that if you give your life to Jesus Christ, and remember, He knows your heart. He's willing to receive you. And I can't mislead you and tell you life is going to be a bit of roses, because it's not. You're still going to have the same trials and tribulations, clean and sober, as you're going to have not clean and sober. But you're able to overcome them through Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is the cure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, David, I love David come up with that. But it is that simple. Submit your life to Christ and rejoice in then knowing that He walks with you and speaks with you when you're in prayer. Man, I'll be driving down the road and God will just start speaking to me. And I'm just overwhelmed because I seek Him each day, every minute of each day. It becomes a process that we go through. It gets so easy that you feel His presence upon you at all times. And I, I, I pray for all of y'all to go there and receive that blessing that God's got waiting on you. Trust in Him. Confess your sins with your mouth and ask Him to come into your heart. Thank y'all so much. God bless y'all.